<laughs> What's up, Nutter Butters? What do they no. say in, uh, in Die Hard's infamous PG cut? What, what do they say? yippee ki yay no, Do they say, like, Mother Falcons? Mother Fudgers. yippee ki yay Mother Fudgers. What's up, Mother Falcons? Okay, uh, this yeah. was really unexpected. Mother Fathers? Oh, I so think I remember that being a thing. What's up? I am only on page 620. We've just basically started hanging out and finding out that old Jim was the cause well, of some shit I mean, shit cause go down. of insofar as he knew it would happen and allowed it to when he had the power to stop it. But he didn't do it. He just objectively knew it would happen and let it happen. And had the uh -huh. power to easily prevent it from happening. If you were in my psychology course right now, I would say, right, so please explain to me how watching something occur and doing nothing about it is not no, part it's very of his your fault. fault. <laughs> yeah. Old, old right. Jim did let that trolley tr uh, roll, huh? <laughs> he stood in front of the trolley and said it can go. He made Oh, are they bringing up the trolley problem yeah. after I talked about yeah. philosophy? High yeah, five old to Jim you. stood at that boom. switch and went, on one hand, Arlong dies. On one hand, untold numbers of innocents will die. Ah, he's my boy. Yeah. <laughs> Someone it's gave 100 hilarious. bits and said one bit for each time Nami doesn't make it in the top five. I feel People like Nami has... I, 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 we, don't, we can't... This is a prediction. You don't say anything about this. You can't reply to this because we're not there yet. I think Nami has a decent chance for a return to Sad Peyote. Mm. I think there's a chance. Do you? Do you? Interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. That's wild. I, I know mm. one wild. person I want mm. to put in the top one, but it's uh, if it were my list, but it's hard to know if you can put like <laughs> an animated corpse following orders in the top one. Oh, that's hilarious. I like how everyone is like, don't jinx it, drop. This Started here work. and I'm immediately like, is Buggy legit the only dude who's cut this hat? Uh, I believe Man, so, this yeah. This hat has been through so much, and the only wounds on this hat are from Buggy D. Clown. Damn. Mm. Yeah, actually, I'm thinking about it, and I think it was only Buggy. Who I have predictions you have about. predictions. We're going to be playing a game where Mama guesses what people have been up to in the time skip, what they've been doing in the last two years. Yeah, I have ideas, and as you know, I'm comfortable with uh, oh, just wow. shoving them out there. As this show shows us. Okay. What is the chapter that we were supposed to start um, on? Yeah, I think it's 598. I, 598 to 602 of is Return to Sabaody. Did you see me know that I right did. away? Can I, can I begin with something that I told you might make me cry immediately? When people review One Piece, they talk a lot about the idea of a story feeling earned. And I think Oda is better than almost any author. I think better, in my opinion, than any author I've ever met at making big things feel earned. I think it's really easy in a movie to go big to quickly or any story like just a fight to save the world rarely feels like it's earned because it's too big to feel like it's earned narratively most of the time and Oda starts us as a story with what feels like kids playing pirate who really don't understand the world they're taking on at all who are strong and capable and driven but don't really get the size of what they're getting involved with and Return to Sabaody I think is so cool because it perfectly delivers on the earned earned feeling of those kids playing pirates having gone through everything they have up to this point learning to be a crew together becoming a family gaining the strength of character the knowledge they needed to take on the world having now trained themselves to the level that they feel like a force that can take on the world and they still feel like them and it feels earned and that's incredible so i'm really excited to talk about the return to sabahody is it just six chapters yes Okay, can I just say that for those people who subbed yes. to Patreon, they watched me read this already. So don't fash yourself because I already had a spaz as I was reading this the first time. You like did cry. A, no, Sorry, I never cry. Never. I'm fain. I'm famously. famously I. The bit. The bit is. <laughs> The bit is impossible to track. I famously don't cry when yeah, doing of any of these. If you do join, the VOD is up. You can watch the VOD of Mum reading the Return to Sabaody live if you go sub at the $3 tier right now. I lost my mind. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was, I couldn't even handle it. And I had to re read it afterwards because I was so reading it out loud. First of all, I was all taken with emotions, very, very stoic uh -huh. ones, but emotions. And then I was having trouble reading live, moving all over the place. And then when I read it again, uh, then, uh, spoiler yeah. alert, I cried some more. So this, this little piece here is the thing that I first picked. I picked two things. Yeah, I mean, this is nice and simple, which is good because the second well, thing well, I picked was not gonna simple. going to be for talking about Fishman Island part one. Yeah. But when I opened the page and finally got to read because somebody made me take a major break. I mean, you agreed ahead of time you, that you should take a major break at that point because it's taxing. Yeah, but in my defense, I didn't know that we were going to be uh -huh. like, you know, 
I mean, like, yeah, what nobody did you think? It was going to be the one part of One Piece where, like, there wasn't the cliffhanger? I don't know <laughs> what I thought, okay? Okay. I'm not sure you what ever, I thought, but somehow do you I agreed it was a good idea. Remind yourself, eventually, I'm going to be reading re week to week, take a step back and realize nearly every chapter ends in a cliffhanger? Yeah. I know, I hate it all. <laughs> catching up is a blessing and a curse because every chapter is a cliffhanger. I'm so looking forward to it, though. Like, can I just say that I'm looking forward to being caught up so I no longer have to censor myself from the universe? We talked about how I'm also going to get to go to the back of the story again. I've already started reading the story again. And that we're going to go through and we're going to invite people to mm -hmm. come on with us. Oh, yeah, and, we only uh, mentioned that on Patreon, right? About it so that we can have so that we can have like really open discussions about it and get different people who are um theorists and one piece lovers all on YouTube to come onto the show cuz then we can have super cool awesome open chats mm -hmm. about stuff going back from the beginning talk about what we missed what meant things to us etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. so i'm super excited for that everybody thinks less <laughs> of the arc they catch up on than they should because the way the pacing changes when you switch to reading weekly really, really fucks with your ability to like properly gauge the quality. Yeah, I would, I would say that too. I'm super unlooking forward to the part where I have to wait week <laughs> to week for chapters. Hey, week to week, and also he's taking more breaks than ever, so there's a lot of weeks off. Sigh, <laughs> less sigh. I mean, it's probably a good thing he's taking care of. Okay, himself. but let's, I mean, yeah, because otherwise. Okay, here we go. When I turned the page into the first thing I saw was this image here with snow oh, all over Luffy straw hat. No, no, no I got I the order wrong. Don't you worry. Word. Don't interrupt. I just uh, forgot how seasons hell, work. Man? It's just how it is. You know when you forget the order of the seasons, that common thing? They both start with an S, Drum you know? Mama. Okay, thank you. I really like that this person called me Stramama. <laughs> That's your cool name. Uh, should we get into Should we that. get into the return to Sabayote? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to. When I opened up this page and I saw Luffy's hat sitting there with snow all over it and the little piece of the Viva card hanging out at the front, I actually, I think I squealed and cried or just cried or squealed. I don't know. I think you said it was an inhuman sound. Yeah, I think that is actually true. I, I thought you had gone quiet because nothing was picked up. No one heard you make a noise. <laughs> I couldn't even believe it. I I, I have no uh, recollection of exactly what happened, but I had no idea. This is, mm, this sounds weird, but I had no idea how much I loved the story until there was a weird break, even though like it was a tiny, it was a tiny break. And then when we come back and I see the hat sitting there after the last time that I had read, I'd seen him put it down. Like, I could not believe the level of of like euphoria I felt. I was just like, oh my God, it's here. Like I just couldn't even believe how overwhelmed I was with emotions when I saw it. And then I was like, oh shit. I'm not like a light fan, it turns out. I'm I may be fanatical. And and I thought I thought that I really liked it and I really admired Oda and I thought that I was like you are incredible, Oda, and you've done such a phenomenal job. But when I saw Luffy's hat with the snow on it, I swear to God, I was just like, oh shit, I am a way bigger fan than I even knew. And so watching Luffy pick it up and say, it's been two years already, huh? And then put the hat on his head and getting to see where he was and all the people from Amazon Lily supporting him and... The animals are now his friends, which I love that it makes it harder for him to eat them. So he was sitting there and being like, I haven't got to eat as much meat lately since, you know, I now don't eat these ones. I just was like, oh, holy shit. I almost lost my mind. Which, oh, all right. delete your all art. Right. We're giving up on the seasons idea because we got to do something different. I don't know oh. what that's going to be, but we have to do something different. But, everyone, the seasons no, are in the right order the now. Order. The, I fixed them. Oh. Well, they're not anymore. Now they're dead. But I did fix them. Winter and fall were backwards? No, everyone wants you to go back Winter and put them in the right backwards. order. How did I do it twice? How did I fuck you up did. the order of the seasons twice? <gasps> you think. I have to go so fast because this is a terrible idea what I'm about to do and we're only giving myself two hours. Guys, I need permission. Everybody, I need you. I okay. need you to give me permission this one time. I'm allowed to zoom in, okay? Do we agree that this one time Drock is allowed to zoom in? Permission granted. I'm there Perfect. For it. We're ready. This time, we're going to fly all over the canvas. Normally, I keep okay. it steady for everybody so it's nice and viewable. But the idea I just had literally 
isn't going to work if I can't zoom in because of the art style that I'm about to do. Damn, okay. So when we got to Sabayoti, what is the very first thing that we see? Frickin' Brooke being a rock star. Are you trapping me right now? Could this have been any better? Because when we last saw Brooke, I would say that he was one of the ones in the most precarious situation. I mean, although it does turn out that Sanji's was quite serious, given what occurs to him this later on. serious in a very different but way. But seeing Brooke, exactly. Seeing Brooke come out as being like the freaking rock star of the century, standing on stage with all of these people being like, oh my God, the soul came. I was like, that's amazing. From being in a cage and being watched, picking up a guitar, and then suddenly playing for everyone to being front and center on a stage like this. Also makes you wonder, like, Brooke has to have a ton of Possibly. money. Yes. Yeah. Probably. Well, yeah. And then I didn't notice until I went into color that our good friend Sanji had a oh, goatee. Didn't? I mean, he had a little bit of stubble down there before. Yeah, I don't even know how I feel about the goatee. I'm I'm always hit or miss on the goatee. For some people, yeah. the goatee yeah. kills it, you know? You see someone in a goatee and you're like, that was meant yeah. for your face. That's just right. Some people put on a goatee and you look at them and you're like, do you understand that you just look like you're about to tie someone on a railway tack? I think, I think personally... I agree or, with you, and I think he pulls it off. Did you just say it'll grow on you? I'm always uh-huh, going to lean into uh-huh. a dad joke. There's a lot of middle fingers People, being used in the comic, in our, mon- in in our manga. You know what's funny? All of them get censored for the anime and they all turn into like people putting up their pointer finger or whatever dumb shit. Like Law into the original Sabati constantly gave people the finger and he was just always like pointing up with his pointer finger all the time in the in the anime. I also think it's really weird that we have switched to the other eyeball. This person mm-hmm. was like, what about the left eye? I think it's really weird that we've just suddenly switched to the other eyeball and the curly eyebrows just gone I mean, in a different it's direction. It's not gone in a different direction. Thank it just God turns out they go in opposite directions and then when we see nami for the first time first of all girl's gonna freeze to death if we're doing the rest of this manga in i mean her in a bikini top i mean i think it's because sabaudi is a very tropical environment and the straw hats do tend to adjust their outfits to where they are agreed but very rarely do people wear full pants with a bikini top and if unless i'm mistaken um, her, boobs her boobs grew, grew again. but also just this way oda draws boobs kind of grew but I'm loving her hair. Her looks hair. Great. She's got a lot of confidence. And frankly, giant beyond the beyond the pale boobs aside, I actually do really like her outfit. I think like, is she wearing a bikini top and pants? Yeah, but like the pants have the cool rings on the side. She's got the cool heeled sandals. She's got like the bracelet. Like, I think the look is pretty tight. I remember her wearing a bikini yeah. top and pants in Skypea, but it, it was, it was I don't different. Know, it looked different. Sure. This maybe it's because her boobs are boobier. And then we get down to the most important part. The biggest pieces of shit You're to not ever a fan of these up. friends. Huh? I mean, I they make me so <laughs> angry. I can't even stand it. These fake freaking fools. And to see how grossical they are too. Like these are the grossicalest things I've ever seen. Luffy is so wrong. He's just and this person said that they always saw Sabayoti as sticky and not I mean, hot. And you humid. can be sticky and hot and more humid. sticky. <laughs> the direct to DVD straw hats. Guys, what do we like better? Direct to DVD straw hats, dollar store straw hats, bargain bin straw hats, straw hats we have at home. Uh <laughs> wish straw wish hats straw is hat. good. <laughs> eBay straw hats. Uh, I do think it was great in the anime. I agree no. that each of them was voiced by a different one of the Straw Hats voice actor. And which voice actor did which? Apparently every dub does their own mix-up. They don't keep having the same, like, they are not like always Luffy's voice actress will voice Sanji. Every single dub has switched it up based off of what they think would be funniest and based off of which of the uh, voice actors wanted to do an impression of who, which is very funny to me. Yeah, no. They look like wood pants, <laughs> not Straw Hats. The wood pants I hate them. Pirate. <laughs> For me, they are the wood pant pirates and I hate oh them. My God, yeah. And as they're trying to pretend to be my special friends, I felt very angry. Oh my God. And yeah, when poor Chopper had to meet with them and he thought that they were his little friends and then it turns out that they were just wood pants or the way the chick was leaning. How about you give you two choices? Either you accept Captain Luffy or invitation or you die. <laughs> Wood pants is a good name for them. They're not straw hats. They're wood pants. That's so funny, though. (laughs) Uh I think I'm right about it. Okay. Now, we're sitting here, and Nami is just like, whatevs. I don't give a shit what these people think of me or what they want. I'll take them down if I need to. And then who shows up with a 
fucking plant that eats one who, of the people? Who, I don't know who does. It's my main man Usopp, and his glow. His glow is, is up. Is that? Oh, there's no words. There is no words for uh, so, for Usopp's so glow. Like we have not he, decided. We have not talked about who you no think words. has the best post time skip design. But the biggest upgrade is Usopp, right? 100%. I did decide that the biggest glow up change was definitely Usopp. And he is yeah. hot. He looks hot. I'm like, Usopp good for you, freaking Usopp. And you do chomp mm -hmm. Nami down. Yeah. Ah, oh, goddamn. I'm so happy for him. It also just made me so happy for Usopp because it's like, A, it's kind of a weird area for Usopp to get into, but it kind of makes sense too, because I always think about the Aesop's fables kind of being natural tales. Oh. You know what I mean? Like you've got like uh, crows and foxes and all these other things, and it's always yeah, natural. It's, it's, it's animals. Tales of, um, yeah, it's always natural tales, animals. And then to have Usopp get something that's like uh, nature-based so that he could be kind, kind of like uh, almost well, mage-like. Natural intelligence I was always like, kind of seemed like his thing. The, now yeah. he has plants the way Nami has weather to have yeah. that magical feeling edge without a devil fruit exactly and so it made me feel so happy for him because i was like nobody here needs to ever think about usopp as being lesser than or not having his own place he's got a new way of being awesome so that he can feel really good about himself and i just was like god dang it usopp his suspenders over his well buffed up chest i mean i'm still not gonna lie dude doesn't have the greatest most I, fashionable outfit his outfit here, but is I'm, not I'm loving fashionable, his. but it works really well for me. And that's what I was going to say is I'm loving the continuity with his character. That feels like a way that Usopp would glow up. It's kind of more of a like effortless upscale bum. And sure. uh, yeah, it works. It really <laughs> works for him. And I was so happy. Ah, he kind of looks like if a um, lobster fisherman and a lumberjack got together with a I'm fireman so confused, and made him an but, outfit. Yeah, sure. The, the way I see it is Oda has fashion well, sense as a, as a character trait. Some characters are fashionable and some are not. Luffy is not fashionable. Uh, he adds the sash because the uh, because the Kuja think it would be cool. He wore stylish black shorts because Nami bought them for him. Uh, so he, Usopp is not a character who's fashionable, but this is Usopp, what Usopp thinks looks cool. So it doesn't feel like fashion, but it does feel cool. Like it feels like he's doing his own thing and leaning into it. This person, Usopp looks like he's from Maine 100%. Like if you look at it, there's also kind of like a little leaning to some of the places he's liked the most because there's a little Nordic vibe around the middle there with the way the front and the fur goes. But it looks like he's wearing like a fisherman's hat and then the suspenders keeping it up. Like I'm telling you, it's it's a combo My and I'm, I'm in love with it for him. Uh, post time skip is definitely like somewhere between a dude from Maine and like a traditional explorer. Yeah. I like that Haberfax is saying he's a lumberjack and he's okay. Are you sure you're not Canadian? I mean, that's a British comedy. I'm I'm sorry. Canadians steal they, that they do. all and night long, all day long. By name in the song. Exactly. So let's high five over that. And then when we go to Grove 3 and find out that the idiot swordsman was the first one there I, and how much it bothers Sanji. I makes love me really that happy it bothers for Sanji that he was the first one there. I also love finding out why he was the first one there, that he definitely did not get here on his own. Yes. Not only did I love that, but I adore that our pretty Duval has just like got the living tar beat out of him trying to protect our ship i was like oh, duval you just keep he did his best you keep bringing it you keep bringing it oh, and all the no we're not talking about him yet parker and then there's our hot main man hanging out with shaki did you yeah. think they're married did i not pick up on that they just don't feel married you know they feel like two people who just kind of uh, live together like they, i could they, i could see them hooking up very, nonstop, they, but you know like i said I mean? in our read through uh video stream the patreon one they have a very these are swingers vibe to me like i feel like this is not a closed relationship yeah. for sure yeah the married for tax reasons or married yeah, for love they, they're, they're or married together, but, but neither like, one of them is like this isn't this isn't a this their relationship is not uh exclusive absolutely that's how i feel about yeah, them. my my wife saw you um, across super the bar cool. vibe a hundred percent. I like how it's very interesting that when we see Rayleigh, he's wearing a scar down his eye. Like we end up finding out that my poor my poor baby has, which I'm very you're I'm still a not, hard time. I'm still not very happy about that. New uh, facial features, huh? I'm really I am really having a hard time with it. When we saw Robin, I said, "Hey, Robin yeah. and Calico, I agree. His his eye suddenly be missing for me is kind of like yeah, uh, whoa." Yeah, that came out of nowhere. I didn't I see mean, that coming. I mean, my feeling on it, so man was swinging around that. sharp metal for like two years straight. Yeah, but he's been yeah, but not with doing the this his whole freaking life. Uh-huh. I don't know what to tell you. I look forward to seeing the battle between 
Hawkeye and him that okay. did it in a flashback because obviously that will occur and I will get to see it. Is it a prediction? Yes. But like, am I the only one who thinks that? No, there's no way everyone wasn't like, oh, that will um, happen. Um, apparently Robin's boobs got bigger as well, which is surprising because I didn't think Robin's boobs could get also any bigger, but I was wrong. You, like it, it, that the anime makes all the boobs even bigger. You At this point of the anime, what Robin and Nami look like is inhuman. Like the manga is exaggerative and bizarre and the anime is distressing and unsettling in my opinion. I find that very weird because you're like, don't show anyone real blood or a middle finger, but feel free to pump girls' tits up to the point that they and, couldn't and physically say, stand. Over, for as, as like over the top as his boobs is, they at least have like a bit of boob shape to them. The anime's boobs are just circles. Like they're just big circles. And it's so awful to look at. I don't understand. Yeah, Frankie and Zoro also have a bigger chest now. That is true. That's, that's nonsense. Frankie and Zoro having a bigger chest makes sense because you can yeah. do push-ups and shit to get there. I mean, push-ups do but make like, women's chests bigger. Are these women off? In, instead, it feels like these women are off in the world and they're like, I need to get stronger and become really good about weather and do all this crap and get into things with the rebellion. But while I'm at it, I want to take a side six months to See, get a breast for, implant. For Nami, it at least makes a bit of sense because it's like, okay, yeah, she was a 18 year old who's become 20 right or 17 became 19 it's at an age where maturing and her body changing a bit makes some level of sense what happened to robin she took a scant six months during her time with the rebellion to go yeah. get breast implants yeah that yeah yeah so then our little dude copper Ch comes copper? back and copper is all like chopper? um copper oh sorry chopper yeah no it happened chopper <laughs> chopper the chopper the <laughs> copper comes back and he's like, I'm Chopper. Let's hang out, friends. Oh, these are my friends. Why are they being mean? Why did they steal Robin? And you think that when they stole, quote unquote, Robin, who's a member of the Wooden Pants, that he would notice that normally his friends wouldn't steal one of the other ones and be like, these aren't my friends. And instead, apparently he was just like, Checks out that I mean, my friends he, he are assholes. He complain now. about it. He's very sad. He's like, like, why are you guys mean? I know he's sad, but also like maybe weird. I, I mean, he know? also he also thinks so Come, Sniper a little, King little is weird. a person. Yes, he d he does. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't. I can't even. I can't even look at it now. Even looking at it now, I get excited Aww. and get like the ex the excitement, cold sweats when I see Luffy coming in with his <laughs> big bag of stuff. And he bumps in and he turns his little face and inside of the hood, it's Luffy. Ah, Luffy. Ah, God, I'm so excited. Hi, Luffy. <laughs> and then getting to see, getting to see the way that Hancock, poor girl, had to give Luffy back to the world and her putting that cloak up around his face before he left and how she was clearly just destroyed by it. She's doing her best. And so she packed him. She packed him everything. I've prepared you a rucksack with... <laughs> 500 changes of clothes, enough packed lunches for a thousand men, handkerchiefs, tissues, five years worth of towels, three years worth of drinking water, and snacks, silverware, cutlery. She keeps going on and on. And I was like, this is a little heartbreaking moment watching her have to do this. She can't offer him any more protection. She's not the one who's there with him. And so when she sends him back into the world, she sends him with this ridiculous bag of crap. So seeing her heartbreak as Luffy left and then getting to see Luffy in the center of the town, and fake wood pant Luffy putting a gun to my straw hat. Oh, you <laughs> piece of shit. I just, was I saying it when we were reading it live? Yes, I was. That I kept saying, and is this where Luffy you kills him? Yeah, is this where Luffy kills him? Yeah, because I really just wanted him to die. I, that my whole thing about this is that I wanted deep death for him. And I was sad every moment that he continued that, to live. That was the energy. <laughs> And I kept reminding you, Luffy doesn't kill people that often. Go ahead. We're like, yeah, but this time he should. What do you think? I think Damalo should Black make an or St. Charles? Who should be killed? St. Charles. Like, that's... So there is someone worse than Damalo Black still. I mean, yes. You forget about Pearl. <laughs> Although, in our tier list video, you did put Akainu as worse than Pearl. Well, come on. He <laughs> killed yeah, my That ace. is what happened. <laughs> the ship... Looks delightful. Everything was good, even though it was for two whole years. And the glow up on our man, it's, Frankie. So I told you, this is oh. one that a lot of people hate. 
There are lots of people who hate Frankie's post time skip design. What? No. Three equal opinions that I've seen, which is I love Frankie's post time skip design. I hate Frankie's post time skip design. And I would like it if he had his old hair still. So I was just going to ask, is the For problem a lot the of hair? People, the problem is just the hair. And a lot of people would like him. Their opinion is I would like post time skip Frankie if he had his old hair. The interesting thing is that the, the thing I think is worst about Frankie, because I see hair is an ephemeral concept. Uh -huh. That changes. But the thing I don't like as much as his lower arms with the stars on them, because there was something about his bulging Not triceps, triceps uh, that was so goofy four, four, and what Popeye. Is that quadriceps? No, that's legs. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Forearms. Forearms. And so I, for me, the thing that I think I miss the most is his low, his forearms being so ridiculously that's Popeye. Fair. And now he's got these weird boxes in his lower arm. But on the other hand, it allows for torpedoes. So it's really hard to just be pissy and then not remember it, that you get for torpedoes me it works now. so well because it's so goofy and over the top ridiculous. And it sells the bit so much of all the like boys being like, it's so cool. And the women being like, what the f is what's wrong with you? Like that joke is great. Yeah. And it only works if he's ridiculous and over the top. And I really think it works. But also I just, I don't know. It feels like what Frankie would see as like the cool ultimate robot that he looks like a big toy. Yeah, but now I don't like that his arms kind of drag on the on the ground and he seems ungainly. I'm like, like, how do you slip your arm around your sweetheart's shoulder this way? I sneakily slipped my arm around you both. Oh, it, sorry, I did not very big you or which you know there are tall people in the One Piece world. Uh, what's her name from Amazon? Lily could date Frankie safely. No, because he'd still take her temple out with the corner <laughs> of his box for her. Raise a point. And then she would have a she'd have a big gaping hole in her temple, and then blood would spew out, and so, brain matter would leak down no, her not chest. Marigold, and that's not, not sexy. Sonia. I was thinking of just the that's one that's who's not. like. It's a shame he can't do a sneaky little arm slide oh now. God. That's out. Frankie for him. can't go on a drive-in date anymore. <laughs> oh, okay, wood pants. I would talk about you some more. Uh -huh. Get it? Wood, but I hate you. I hope well, you die. Here's what I love about about the new hair. Here's why I love it. Every single arc, you get to go, what insane shit is Frankie going to turn his hair into to thematically try to fit in this arc? And spoiler alert, I've never been disappointed. There, It's it's so funny. It's great. Actually, I've once been disappointed. There's one that I dislike. I think it's going to change. I really like this idea. How do you feel about, even if we split this up, I just do one drawing okay. so I can actually make this because I think it can be very cool. Here we go. Okay, here we go. What's this human's face, the defense person uh, again? Sentomaru. Sentomaru? I don't like him. I genuinely kind of like Sentomaru, especially uh, when Sentomaru is like, Straw Hat is admirable, you fucking aren't. Like, showing that even though Straw Hat is Sentamaru's enemy, there's respect there. I don't there. like him. I might even, I might even hate Good him. boy. I don't know. Good I haven't seen boy. enough of him to feel such deep feelings, so we're gonna have to wait. You know what is a really good joke here is that Sanji is super pissed that he wasn't yeah. the first one. That's great. But what's better is that Zoro is super braggadocious without even talking to Sanji that he yep. is the first one and called him and all the other ones by the order yep. they showed up again and somehow knew all on his own that that would piss Sanji off in a way that nobody could possibly yep. understand or explain. He just knew that like numbering he just Sanji knew. and uh, he comes in numbering hot. them and getting to call himself number one was going to piss him off. It's great. It's so perfect. To the point that he even calls Luffy yep. like number eight or whatever. I just think it was apps and he's like, you're hey, still you with your stupid numbers, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. They're brothers. It's absolutely amazing because when he sees him then to have him be like, oh, there you are. Number three or whatever he is was just a brilliant, brilliant. It's a, it's a fantastic it. bit. Also to have Zoro come out of the water. The exact same way Mihawk was half. introduced, uh, by the way, cutting a, a galleon in half. Exactly. Yep. Exactly what I was about to say. I was gonna say, oh, it's so good because it's such a parallel to the way that we watched Mihawk walk into the picture. So to see the two of them in this way compared after he comes back is like, we couldn't have asked for anything better. I was like, oh, Oda, here's your beer back. Thank you for doing such a good job. <laughs> you, you see the, the joke just, there is implying so Oda said, hold my beer. Yeah, okay, I got you. Good, good, yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Oda asked me to hold his beer. I did. And then I saw what he did and I was like, God damn, I'd hold that beer for you again. Well <laughs> done. Yeah, I think it's incredible. And I bought myself the chopper who was in this outfit. Yeah, I didn't know like, why he was wearing this, this outfit. I didn't understand hat. it. Oh, well. Yeah, I said, these people screwed up Chopper's hat and it's dumb. Maybe I bought an off-brand chopper. No, I 
didn't even know. I was future looking. <laughs> Fun that you didn't spoil yourself because there's so many knockoffs in the world that you were like, ah, this is just some weird knockoff chopper. Oh, well. My entire thinking was like, oh, damn it. I accidentally got a knockoff so chopper what do you think and didn't about even notice. The cutification of That's chopper, okay. where he no longer looks like a little Muppet because uh, a lot of people dislike that choppers become more and more cutesy over time. Uh, and Oda said it's because when he heard the voice actress do the voice, he felt like he needed to draw chopper cuter to fit <clears> how cute of a job she was doing as a voice actress. I just, I think it's asked to give it a crap about that because Chopper now has so many different abilities and ways of looking that I'm like, Chopper changes so much that I, I'm pretty cool with him looking All the right. way he does. I think he's adorable. I hope this is a hot take and people are like, through her and comment about it I, all over the place in the comments. There is someone who dislikes stupid. every That's single perfect. post-time skip straw hat uh, and thinks that they were better before. I'd say Chopper's not one that people really care about post-time skip so much, uh, but people just think over time he's gotten cuter and smaller and don't like it. Some people, not everybody. The hat makes him more you know Canadian. What? Okay. Why? What? The new hat? Okay, like I'm not talking about the pink and shit, but the way that it comes down the side of his ears and the way it does uh -huh. and the way it's more fluffy. You think it looks more, more fluffical with its little weird I, danglies on the end and plus Canadians are a little bit a little bit waggly do waggly with their hats. do like we I have so many different types of hats and and so we've got so many like I must own a million hats and some of them are weird and strange as ass like this one so I kind of actually felt like I was like oh there you go there's my little chopper in his cute little Canadian waggly do okay. hat I felt good about it and he is he is kind of cuter. Like his eyes are more roundy, big. I don't know. All right, I don't fair give enough. a shit. I like him. Don't pick on Chopper. Yeah. He's excellent. I, every time we talk about a Straw Hats post time skip design, I want I will tell you a little bit about like what's what's the fan base generally vibing. I would not say he's Skookum Mountain Shire since Skookum is big and he's Skookum a little was just kid. Cool. But I would use Skookum for other things. All right. No, I don't know Canadian slang. The reason things are called Skookum is after an indigenous word for big, just like Chuck is after. An indigenous word for water so when you put skookum chuck oh, okay. together it's just big water which is why there's the skookum right. chuck narrows where are we now yeah. what's great water let's, big let's water keep this journey you know what i don't love and i've and and i think it's a problem because i think other people think it's really cool but i just want to put a patch on them i'm really uncomfortable with the freaking eye yeah, so i'm just really about unhappy about it designer. here's what i'll say about it everybody loves it it's fucking rad everybody i have never seen a negative opinion and you were the first person i've seen feel this uncomfortable about him losing an eye like i just i'm just sad i don't think I don't think we're I don't think we're sad enough for him that's a big thing to to lose your eye to just do, are you serious am I the only person who's not like raw raw uh, raw I love that your eye's gone most people I've seen have been like he looks so cool now or been like I wonder why he lost his eye or what magical awesome power is he going to get by opening his eye because he secretly has a magic eye that he's hiding now okay, okay so that's a, that's a very shit, common belief eye? and I think it's largely because the time skip when it happened Naruto was at kind of its biggest and magic eyes are a really big deal in Naruto. I think there's magic eyes in a bunch of other anime too, but Naruto is the big one. So people were like, it's magic eye Zoro time. Okay. Here's uh -huh. my thinking on this whole thing. Uh -huh. Call me crazy. Yes. But he's a pirate, right? Pirates lose eyes because yeah. they get into sword battles. I'm sad for him because he's lost perspectives like Beltrix. I am. I'm. He, he has less perspective yeah. less that he's able to perception. use, but yeah. maybe he can compensate it. But it just feels like I just want to look at Oda and be like, for crap sakes, man, he's a pirate. However, Give him a Oda has gone out patch. of his way to say and I, only the pirate is pirate blah, 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 will have the a patch. The eye yeah. being saved yeah. and then you'll know you're at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I know. know all that shit. I don't care. I want him to have a patch. It, it it makes me sad and either give him a cool patch because he's a bloody pirate or immediately show me the coolness of their fight so I can start to decide how I feel about Mihawk right now. I want to know how I feel about Hawkeye and the ambiguity of the situation isn't even okay. letting me decide okay, whether I'm like, be, yeah, okay, fair wouldn't fight. Wouldn't perfect if down the, uh, the road there's a flashback and you see Zoro and he's walking around the castle, just walking, Not, nothing's even happening. And Perona's like, Hey, you used my towel again. He's like, I don't see your name on it. And she's like, actually, I, mo I did monogram it. it. has my initials. And she gets pissed and just makes him depressed. And he gets really sad, slumps over, falls down the stairs, loses an eye. <laughs> no. I would like it, however, if Hawkeye took his eye and was like, I'm Hawkeye and that's where I got my name from. I pluck <laughs> eyeballed out. I like it better than Hawkeye goes, <laughs> yuck. And then no eye for you. <laughs> Every swordsman must face down no these stairs. You. Why do you think I got the name Hawkeye? Because you like birds. <laughs>
Um, who's the dude with the big forehead who's an alien and a fish? What? Who's part of the wet hair caribou's <laughs> tribe? He's wearing like a <laughs> he's wearing like a ponytail coming out of the he's the ugliest oh, thing. Oh, the guy who wanted to join Demolo Black's uh, thank fake you, Albion. Yeah. Yes, Albion. <laughs> Albion is the ugliest Yes, he's an he's an alien fish. I was not Rihanna alone boy. in having no idea what you were talking about. I want you to know. I'm telling you right now, somebody did. They actually just said it was Neilus Cornelius. Yeah, said, someone oh, had yeah. you. Someone did Thank have you. Neilis, you. I was not alone in not having you there. He is the ugliest I thing think, I think um, I've ever seen drawn Cricket in my life. I drew a beautiful picture of a baby between him and wet hair caribou because you mentioned on the Patreon stream. He did because I said that that would be the ugliest baby ever made is if Albion and wet haired caribou had a baby that would officially be the ugliest yeah. thing ever created. But I'm telling you right now, I just, I, I think it shows how talented Oda is that he drew this because I didn't even know anything could make me feel this uncomfortable. Every time I see him, I get a tummy Oda ache. Is, does have a remarkable talent for drawing the ugliest people. Ugh, so gross. So gross. And caribou licking his eyes and licking his face all the time. I hate this wet haired caribou. I am grateful that he's stupid. Uh, the praying thing, everything about him, just bleh. That's the sound my stomach makes. You're welcome. The Luffy speech to his crowd of terribles where he's getting all the people to, uh, I like how, I'm always impressed how angry Oda makes me and how quickly he can do it. I'm yeah, a reasonable no, freaking human being. get you so I, pissed off. Oh my God, I get so angry so fast when he draws crap. And I'm not here online where I'm so sweet with such a pristine, clean yeah. mouth without any pottiness. I do all the swears and the angering and the like spit and fire. Hot spit, I get angry. Let me just tell you right now, because I get so pissed off in such a short amount of time. I hate this piece of shit so much. I can't even express it in a way that would tell people how much I hate them. I am spicy today. People aren't wrong. <laughs> people, by the way, two of our mods tried, I've just noticed, oh. tried to remi uh, remind me of the order of the seasons when I was fucking it up. How did I do it twice? How did I twice fuck up the order of the seasons in different ways? You know what? Maybe Uh huh. here's what I think. Uh huh. You want to hear me out on this? Maybe you were thinking both in a Western style and in a Japanese style at the same time, and you kept moving from you, right to left and happens. left to right. No, that is you, what happened. That's not where my brain was at, but thank you for trying to uh, run cover. Hey, Baltux de Bozo, we live in an area of Canada that gets we four good We live in an seasons. area of Canada that has literally two seasons. What? We live in a rainforest. There's a wet and dry season. That is true. That's no, how rainforests that work. I had snow. There, no. There's like... A week of snow sometimes. There is always two weeks of snow spread out. It's not a season. <laughs> there, literally, a season. there's two it's seasons called, here. It's called printer. Also, you're doing it by Western things. If you think about it the way that indigenous people did it, you do it similar to the way they do in Japan. So there's frog season, yes, cricket season. Yes, and also, season, like, there just are lots of climates that don't have four seasons. Like, that's just, like, it applies to not that much of the world. But you are right, Baltric. We don't have the most seasoniness. I'm not going to lie. Drock's most feared song, Season but, of the Witch. <laughs> no, that's actually kind of a good song. It's kind of a banger. Although, okay, this is such a detour. This is such now a detour. Song in my head. But it pisses me off how on the nose it is that the season of True Blood where witches were the big bad, the end credits after they revealed witches were real in the first episode, because like magic magic hadn't been a thing in True Blood before, they did season of the witches, the uh, end credits. That's too on the nose. You shouldn't be allowed to be that blunt. You've turned your show into a hammer. It's kind of great. It's kind of great, though. It's kind of a great I'm move. I'm just sitting here trying to think about how you could call that show anything I mean, you're right, but a hammer. But, like, that's excessive. That's... <laughs> You are you are off pocket. You're in the pocket here, but can I just say, in the True Blood, they used a giant sledgehammer to true. chisel fine art. That thing, that was like that was some Michelangelo level I, amazingness. I'm <laughs> sorry, I, I couldn't hold it together I, anymore. Dude, dude, straight up, straight up. Years from now, years like from now, it. when we it run out of Michael content, Angelo. what if we just rewatch True Blood and do a True Blood watch through? The series went to dumb places. I will never get out of my mind how much I love the sentence. I am the goddamn king of Louisiana. <laughs> I know you used to say that all the time place. as a young teenager. <laughs> 
We're not watching okay. Supernatural. A little hands in the air like you just don't care for Brooke on stage in his concert. I wanted to point something out about um, Brooke. Brooke's not wearing the what? clothes he died in anymore. I know, I'm he so does happy for him. He's kind of like yeah. Jimi Hendrix meets, he, he's no longer as much Slash because yeah. of where he's at. And he's kind of also got a little bit of what's his face. Elton John? Um, a little bit of Stone's inspiration. I feel like there's definitely Elton John to me. No, Stone. Well, that's because yeah. he's got big glasses and shit. And anytime you have that. But Elton Elton John, I mean, only really dressed that color so just coordinated for a short that time. that they didn't like Brooke's guitar. I will say Brooke is one. I have seen a few people dislike his post-time skip design. He's not one of the big three that I think I've seen lots of complaints about. Why wouldn't we like a shrimp guitar? I've seen some people dislike him. Don't they see... That Oda just predicted Baby Shark ahead of time? I think Baby Shark is older than this, actually. It just didn't catch on at first. Uh, like, but it was a... Yeah, it was a thing before you it caught on. It was actually... It was... When it's older it? than you think. I found out about this recently. Yeah, well, Baby Shark's way older than you right think. Now? It just wasn't like a meme. Are we praising Best Glow Up Frankie? We actually skipped it. But we didn't skip it. We're past it. Both of us like it, although Mama Drock is sad that Frankie can no longer pull smooth ones and yawn and wrap his shoulder around his lover at a drive-in theater. Lest he take out her temple with his square forearm. <laughs> Look, you raise a good point, but also it's a very specific observation. You're thinking of baby beluga. Hey, I always call my students baby belugas or sweet belugas or little baby beluga heads. You get the point. It's a beluga thing. And as a group, I always say baby belugas in the deep blue sea. And then I say, get Dude, out your pens I have and start a weird thinking for free. Memory that makes me feel a things about belugas in general. Because when I was a kid, my sister and I were like, hey, siblings sometimes have telepathy, uh, we read in a stupid whatever. So we're gonna try practicing psychic powers. One of us thinks of an image really hard and the other tries to guess it. And fucking nothing. No results, nothing at all. And then I start thinking about a beluga, a little beluga trying to get up from under the ice and poking the ice with a little head, trying to find a place up. And I'm thinking about all these details I'm adding in. And my sister starts to exactly describe what I'm thinking of in perfect detail. Never again. Never one other time did it work. But the one time we felt like it was exactly lined up was a beluga. A beluga trying to pop a look for a place to get some air from under the ice. And that was the only time it ever worked. And this is when I was like eight and she was six. I wouldn't do it anymore anyways, because then I would be no, like- No, but we wanted psychic powers. Out of my head, <laughs> we didn't have them. It was just a weird coincidence. This person here said, if my students are little baby belugas, where do we? Oh, no, no, no. Don't fash yourself. My students are many things. Baby belugas are just the most common. You can also be baby belugas. I will probably refer to you as squishies too. So I have a question. They poked his nose and his hair popped out of his head. So in that case, can we just always bring yeah, Frankie's hair, his hair back well. and that's forth just, between all the different there. things? He can do what he wants. Then what the shit because does it people matter? Want what the old hair, hair they don't like. want all sorts of fun, cool hair where every arc we get special Frankie hair. They Nah, didn't bash yourself. That's ridiculous. His hair does everything it wants. They want, they want the one hair oh, they people. know. They don't want 300 different cool hairs that Frankie chooses. They want the one hair. Listen up, squishies. You need to enjoy yeah. change. Not for change's sake, but when it's cool hair, we need to enjoy that. I mean, give, if you're dating Frankie, I could see why you're upset. You're worried about your temple and losing your gray matter. That's a different, that's, that's a different, different concern. Uh, that's a different issue. I loved coming back and seeing people trying to sell concern. you on that he but could be sweet with his lovers with his tiny hands. And the idea of Frankie holding hands by extending his big hand and tiny hand comes out to hold hands is so fucking funny. No, I hate that. <laughs> what a it's bizarre so image looking. of him being like, let's hold hands by the beach, babe. And... So far, out of Usopp, Nami, Chopper, Robin, and Frankie, I think we're all the way through. We haven't really talked about Robins, and what I'll say is, I think other than Frankie, she's the least popular post time skip design. Lots of people dislike her. People miss the cowboy hat. People miss the bangs. People miss her looking just more like Miss All Sunday vibes. I am in the minority of. I fucking love post time skip Robin. I think her design is fantastic. That's interesting. If I was to say that any of them were a little bit disappointing to me, yeah, it would very be common. Very, very common belief. Like, I think that we could have done more with Robin. But I love Robin. I don't give a shit. That's her era. If she wants I to pull that, that's fine for to the me. Very simple character design decision of when an introverted character is starting to come out of their shell and lose some of their insecurities, getting rid of their bangs. And I know that's a very dumb trope, 
but I like it and you can't stop me. That's interesting because when I came into my hotness, I got bangs because I was like, let's have something to play with so Fair people enough. understand how adorable I am. I don't understand why the uh, they took okay. away her melanin. So why would you do Oda's that? Oda's designs tend to not vary in skin tone. They vary in every other way. I every, love a melanin Oda's designs all person. tend to be about the same skin color. I had always figured there must be a reason for that because the show or the series very much clearly cares about racism. So like... It felt like there had to be something he was saving darker skin for was my take. Didn't know what that would be, obviously. But the anime for a while was making some executive decisions with character designs and making certain characters like Usopp, Luffy, and Robin darker. Mm -hmm. Where in the manga, they were all the same color when you looked at color spreads. And the anime decided to start following the manga's colors about, well, right at the time skip. With an exception being they kept Robin's eye color they'd had pre-time skip because her eyes are hazel in the manga, but because she hadn't been drawn in color when she was introduced, they gave her blue eyes because they thought it would look cool, and they just kept rolling with it. All right. Thank you for the background yeah. tips, history, Mc McGruffin. I appreciate it. I love Luffy's scar. Yeah, I also right love that the shirt is open to show it off. That new scar is hot. Yeah, I do too. It's a bit strange that he has like a puffy, frilly, um, elbow length, three quarter length sleeve on his coat, and then like a puffy, frilly bottom, but I, whatever. But what's more strange is that he's still wearing like jorts with, I don't know, fur trim or something. I'm also really enjoying his uh, new yellow belt. Hmm. It's called Fashion Mama Drop. I think it's not necessarily hot, but it does feel like it was a gift to him from some tall, cool drink of water yeah. who can turn you to stone. It's, it's very fun that Luffy looks more fashionable because yes. he got dressed up by his girl who wants to be his girlfriend. Yeah, you know, fair Wife. enough. She doesn't, she wants to skip that phase of the relationship. You are correct. Boa wants to okay. commit hard. I do have to say that I'm like, okay, we've met a lot of the people now, Oda. I'd kind of like to see some yeah. of the things that they can do now. And then just as I was getting to the point that I was thinking that, oh, God damn, it's cool. So do you remember when we were talking about the difference between effortlessly cool and somebody who's trying yes. to give off that cool vibe? This part here where Luffy is like, it's the face, uh, they go, it's the face from the wanted poster. And then they're like, departure? Oh no, you're not going anywhere, she says to him. Well, Get him, PX5. Him. I'm not the same man I was two years ago. I've become a full-fledged Marine soldier. I'm going to capture you here and now. And then Luffy is sitting there and... I think that it's really difficult to draw this level of, of cool because it's so subtle. It's a tiny, tiny head tilt with a really fast blurred motion in them. And all Luffy does with big eyes is just go too slow. And it's so understated with an ellipses at the end. And then he just holds his smoking hand out and with no effort goes second gear, gomu gomu no jet pistol. And one punches out the freaking dude and um the you are so Kuma. right that it's so hard to pull off this effortless cool but it does another thing that's so important wait uh, two other things which is it shows us exactly how far he's come because after that Sentomaru points out these are the exact same model of pacifista they fought before that previously it took all of the straw yeah, hats that's to what take out, getting too. but it also means yeah okay fine you're good look up, okay sorry but it also does mean that we can still see stronger pacifistas because this these have been upgraded since then. So it doesn't make to get away yeah. all threat from here on out. But it, yeah. No, but here's what I loved about it besides that. Like, yes, right away it talks about his is the same one yeah. that they fought before. But to say that it was effortless oh, for absolutely. Luffy to it take it out is an understatement. And then Luffy... Luffy does a backflip, grabs his bag, puts it back on his back, and then immediately goes into laughing Luffy. And laughing Luffy <laughs> is one of my favorite Luffys. And then just as we're coming out of that, you hear Zara go, move it. And then just do a drop down, full slice through another of the old Kuma bodies and lands. And you're just like, what happened two years ago with our crew before they grew into this to this moment here that we're seeing this and how very, very quick this happened and how very little, mm, the word I'm looking for, um, despite the fact that Luffy is wearing this coat, is how very mm. little ruffling there is. It's just, they take a pause, they take down their enemy, and then they put back on their things and then go, <clears throat> okay, so, ways, what do you think? Da, 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 da. It's, such a, it's such an insignificant mm -hmm. bump in the road for them. 
and it really shows us how far they've come. And then to have Rayleigh staying there and say, oh, Rayleigh. And then he goes, oh, I thought I'd drop in to take a look, but it doesn't look like you need any help. You have honed your strength still further. And then Luffy goes, and then he goes, well, then you better be off. Your crew awaits. And Luffy goes, yeah, thanks so much, Rayleigh, for everything that you've done these past two years. <laughs> no need for so much formality. Just go, Rayleigh, I'm going to do it. And you're like, say it. I'm going to become king of the pirates. And you're like, Oda. You sneaky bastard, you got me. I teared up again because you hearing Luffy reanimate his dreams in front of Rayleigh and having Rayleigh smile in that way that says, yes, yes, you are. And yes, you're worthy, you know? So it's not just, yes, you are. It's a, you, you are what Roger and I hoped for you are the right one for the fit. It feels like we are watching prophecy. So it doesn't need to be prophecy because it feels like we are watching prophecy because Rayleigh gave him the smile of approval with his tiny little mustache. And it made me feel like I was getting to see the dreams of uh, Goldie Roger coming alive. So in eight panels, Oda took us through a journey of seeing the strength improvement and the hockey development of Luffy and then seeing um, Zoro and then having Luffy reconfirm his dreams and hopes so that he could spark off the second half after a time skip. And then it feels like we are getting to see what is meant to be. And it was so gorgeous. It was delicious. It was all of the <laughs> butterbeer you could hope for. And none of the transphobia. It was everything that you want. And I was just so thrilled with that. Oh, I am spicy today. <laughs> all the butterbeer, none hey, of the transphobia. God, on that note, I need to quickly oh, complain about oh. a comment. Don't hunt this person down. I don't want any commenters harassed, but... There was a comment on our Impel Down video where someone said, I don't think Oda's trying to be pro-gay in real life here. He's showing us what it would be like if gay people were cool. If yeah, gay people that were the cool? For why the gay people were so cool in One Piece was Oda was showing us the alternate reality where gay people are cool. And he's like, man, why can't gay people be cool like my gay people? It was an actual comment we got. Yeah. A comment harassment, very, even to people who I disagree with, I think will create I never would. I don't like comic. <laughs> Quit ruining my time. I'm trying to talk about... I'm trying okay. to talk about a gold right, star you got here. gold stars today. Frankie... Well, yeah, Frankie upgrades himself. Well, I is get a gold star you I had. Get this. Nami upgrades the climb attack. was a gold yep. star you had. Um, yep. Yep. I don't think we had who saw plant magic. Um, this one. <laughs> you know, who would? I wonder if anyone could have predicted who saw plant magic. But I also got a gold star for we already are starting to see flashbacks of Rayleigh and, yes. and well, Luffy. In this the one I think we need circles. to wait a little bit longer before we can call it a montage. But we are starting to see flashbacks. No um, gold star yet. Fine, but I'm gonna call yeah. it a. You've got a star a piece. Star on pause. <laughs> Oh, I did too. There's, he does. there's no argument. Not there's, he went from kind of looking like a doofy, endearing little dumbass to looking like a cool, silly adventure man. Okay, here's what I love because I looked in the other one and I don't know if it said the same thing, but it was similar. Rayleigh says to the Marines when they come out, the crew is heading for Grove 42, Dark King Rayleigh. And then this is what he says about Luffy. Shut up. I can't even yeah, read it. I'm yeah. so. My apprentice is setting sail. Do as you please. And then he goes, but I would suggest that you do not cross this line. And it's I just so about baller. died. My apprentice is setting sail. How can anyone think anything but excellent thoughts about that? That That this is amazing. The sequence of all of their mentors he helping them Luffy flee the apprentice. Marines. Oh, because I love this sequence. Of, of I, course the Marines have I a ton cry. of people stationed here because Luffy wrote 2Y on his arm. Everyone would have figured if he's coming back, it's in two years. That's basically like a statement to the world of when he'd be back. So they, they need help to get yeah, away. Exactly, exactly. And he literally oh. draws a line in the sand and is like, don't cross this line. The otter will take you down. And then to see um, Little Miss <laughs> Sad Ghosts standing there and just saying, 
I just knew this mayhem had something to do with you people. The, and then Sanji, are you from Thriller Bark? Well, what are you still doing hanging around here? Who is she again? Is that any way to talk to the person who brought you all the way here? If it weren't for me, you'd be a real woman, says Sanji. Well, <laughs> of course I am. Ugh, what are you, sick in the head? <laughs> it's so good. It, this is so good that it makes me grip my teeth the whole way through. I'm just like, oh, so good. And watch them all come out to the ship together. And and uh, you know what? I don't know if you know this. And Brooke asked to see um, Nami's panties again. And she kicked him in the face. And she's going on top five sure? just for that. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> the honesty. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. When we get to see everyone together coming onto the ship and... Everyone getting dropped off and all of their mentors and all of the people who helped them stepping in the way. And this is what we talked about before, because it's really that difference with um, the Straw Hat crew and everyone else is that Straw Hats draw people to them who want to see them succeed. And that is freaking incredible. And it's why we keep getting to see um, people intervene on their behalf without feeling like they owe them anything either. Like, it's not like they're coming in and protecting them and coming in on their behalf and then being like, and because of that, you owe me this and this. It's just that people willingly put themselves in the path of others to bring success to the straw hat. And that's how you know somebody is going to be successful. I remember watching um, some politicians and there was this one woman in particular who could remember everyone's name all the time. And I think about her nonstop because names and I aren't friends. I'll remember everything you told me about yourself and your family and your story, but I, I might not remember your name. I'll ask you if your dad's okay though. And it made me think because somebody said something about her and I just had this in instinct to want to protect her. And I was like, ah, that's how you get successful. You are confident enough in your aim that people want to see you reach your aim and they'll protect you. And that's what I really love about what's taking place here. And I also like that we got to see our Hancock take her ship in front of them again, because I don't know if you know this about her. I'm a big fan. Being like, oh, I need to protect Luffy. She has the suaveness to be like, you're in my way and I'll kill you if you don't get out of my way. The problem is that you're in my way. Precisely. The whole problem here isn't that you're about to attack Luffy the whole problem is is that you're in my divine way now get the hell out of my way and she is everything and then Luffy now's your chance with a little wink over her shoulder you know what high five Hancock and I'm glad that you let him go and let him do his thing and then poor Sanji finding out that while he's been training with the women who made him a little uncomfortable with his life that meanwhile Luffy had been training on Amazon Lily I mean it couldn't happen to a better guy like I just love I just love that Sanji finds out that freaking Luffy has just been hanging out on Amazon Lily and he has been very not. The insects getting in the way for Usopp Pan for his mentor and coming out. Those are the same insects that uh, Luffy brought back with him when they yeah, were Hercules on beetles, Jaya. But bigger. That one beetle, but bigger. And the one that he found when he was a little kid. It starts to make you wonder because uh, I think this is the fourth bug time. Bug collecting that I've seen is a big deal in Japan, and Hercules up. beetles are seen as the coolest bugs in Japan. Interesting. Okay. I love yeah. that little piece of news. I'd like to think that they're going to have a, a bigger fact, impact later um, on then. How and then seeing... popular bug collecting is in Japan with kids for kids in rural areas to do is why Pokemon exists. Pokemon was inspired by the creator wanting to get the feeling of finding bugs in the woods near his house uh, in a video game. I love this for Pokemon. I also so adore watching the people in the weatheria blue below the weather, the weather, 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 weather up above create the little weather problem down below because they fell in love with nami all the soap bottles certainly are a bother still what luck we've had with the winds they've landed right above the sabody archipelago and then they they take on so obviously they forgave nami crimes. for all her crazy namiisms and her crimes and stuff and the slight crime she did and then the depression yeah. oh, that all God, the marines so go through shit this was the best freaking little <laughs> mini arc because it could have gone in so many directions but to get to come back to Cybiote as a different group of people and then get to see a little bit of where everybody has been and the relationships because it's hard to remember that while we're watching this our crew had only been together for like six months prior to taking the two-year break and they've been with these people yep. for two years. And I think that it's it's a really hard thing to remember when you're reading this, that all those relationships that they created are huge. So imagine the kind of love at first sight, deep familiness that our straw hats for each other 
when you consider that all of these people that they've been with for two years know that their first love and friendship still belong to the straw hats, despite the fact that they have spent so much more time with these other people having yeah. different lives. That really talks about and the love the, of our straw hats. Uh, Brooks people he stayed with were not chill and cool and good. His fan base is the same thing for him. Yeah, and he and also he mostly left yeah. them and just had his manager. Robin's group wasn't there for her to say goodbye, this person is saying, and like they can't be because it's not time for us to meet Luffy's other mm. brother yet, first of all. You're and, still on this crazy notion it, that it, Sabo's alive, huh? The only thing I'm a little sad about is I would have liked to see Sabo and Sabayoti. Wait, Sabayoti? Sabo. You cracking the Da Vinci Code? Mm. Mm. Here comes the Da Vinci Code. What? Come on now, Sabo's alive. What a crazy Sabo's thought alive. in the world no that body. that Sabo kid survived. No body, <laughs> no boy. That's how you. That's how you work also as a defense attorney. Also, love to in see all of Sanji's. Did you, no do you see a body? Do you see a body? No. Well, then you can't prove he's dead. See. He's alive. Not only is he alive, but I think that Robin spent some time with him. Okay. Okay. That's my hopes. Okay. And my dreams. Sanji, this is your chance, says the dude before he gives a clunky wink where a star breaks as he winks. That's unfair. Let him you know, be you know sexy. What? You know what's fun? Oh, though, no. Is Ivankov's winks are so potent that they can kill people. So this person clearly just hasn't worked on their winking game is what we're being told in the narrative. That's Sometimes rude. Sometimes you're not good at winking. <gasps> oh, we're supposed to plug apparently. There's a countdown. You know what? We, might, we gotta hurry up with, the, with everyone saying goodbye. I don't have to plug for All another right, go, 52 go, go. countdowns. We can't really get into it right now because we're being counted down but i am gonna say that i'm looking forward to talking about the bubble on the boat yeah hi there it's me mama drock you're watching me talk right now you're also watching drock you can also see all the people in the background those are the people on twitch they're twitching you can see them say hi twitch i just wanted to come on here and say i know you're enjoying this because you've watched quite a few now do you remember the last time that you were watching it and then you meant to press like but you didn't well this time why don't you press like then subscribe, then hit the bell. And then in the future, whenever I come on and I say, hey there, peeps, you know, I'm talking right to you, right to you through the screen, into your heart, in your face. It's been an absolute pleasure doing these for you. Feel free to join our Patreons who are rock stars that you can't even imagine at a level that is inconceivable to the human mind and become part of our crew. We have a lot of fun here. And why don't you join us in Twitch sometime so that you can say strange things to me face to face or screen to human or human human to screen to screen to human. That's how that goes. Well, been a pleasure talking to you. I've really enjoyed this and I hope you too. What? Now, get out there, finish watching this video, subscribe and have a great Bye. day. You know how that was my first YouTube plug and then I do my second YouTube plug? Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Subscribe now or don't. I have to subscribe again. Did you see that I have yeah, not, not subscribed, subscribed to, our, to channel. our channel? I can't do that right now. I'm a very, very, I'm in, I'm in the middle of something. Uh, Did you know I'm doing something is currently? Is it more important than subscribing to mom piece? Well, I'm kind of mom. <laughs> I am the mom you in mom piece. Oh no. <laughs> The hypocrisy. We gotta yeah. get coded uh, and we, we have to have coded. a very meaningful More important. flashback to the past. Yes, because I can barely handle that one and I cry. So here's my hope. Okay. I'm gonna try this. What do you think? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm gonna try this. What I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try and talk about what it without cool tears. concept that I'm really thrilled for. Cause I gotta tell you, I don't think I could talk about this without tears. We're just gonna go to the yeah. end here. Our great good kids, Nami describes how all the buoyancy works and the sales and paying attention to the coding and how it will surround the pressures in various ways. And it's all great. Nami's killing it. And she's like, yeah. I'm Nami. Whoop. Yeah. Are you ready for the awesomeness? And it was good. And then Luffy calls Seth sale and i thought to myself because when we did this with the patreons i said to myself oh that was a really good chapter and it didn't particularly yeah, make me cry a whole time, bunch oh here come the tears and we, we thought that meant rayleigh was gonna die protecting them yeah all of a sudden i was like oh my god are we killing rayleigh i can't do that pits on you i'm out and then the wet hair bandit struck again and sucked and i hated him and i was like okay i'm not crying about that and then the stupid dude came back and the kumas were there and i was like whatever ah i can already tell it's not gonna go well here we go and then we see, and then we see Rayleigh. I'm just thinking about it. I'm starting to tear up. Shaggy. So then we see Rayleigh and he's sitting out on the edge of a cliff by himself and the bubbles are coming out of the ground. 
and Shaki walks up to him and says, gone in the blink of an eye, Monkey Chan and the others have become so strong. Oh, you were watching? Of course, I'm their fan, remember? Are you remembering something perhaps, Ray-san? I suppose so. Yeah. <laughs> and then it shows, it shows a cocky young man walking up to a boat. Hey, some ship you got. Oh, this, I stole it. My house was burned down, so this is where I live now. I see, what's your name? Rayleigh? Huh, well, I'm Roger. And he's standing there looking ever so yep. ace meets Luffy-ish in Luffy's hat. And he says, this meeting must be fate, Rayleigh. What do you say to turning the world upside down with me? The world, huh? Who the hell are you anyway? Get out of here. It may just be that there is no such thing as coincidence in this world, as I thought it was always meant to be. Mysterious bonds slowly but surely weave their forms. At any rate, Luffy has taken another step towards becoming a man worthy of the hat he wears. That boy makes me feel like living on for a while longer. Don't Isn't that beautiful? That is incredible. That is incredible. As I was watching it and I realized that that was Roger's hat, I think I I couldn't even believe the level of... Uh, I don't know. It's almost nostalgia for something yeah, I wasn't no, there for. The All right. We go down under the depths with our crew. And the first little bit is just us learning yeah, how a bubble yeah. works, which was great. Yeah, because you got to do the whole thing. But then we find out that when Sanji, and I don't know why it didn't happen until now, when Sanji really thinks a girl is uh -huh. sexy and is with a real live girl again, he So are you not aware of this nose? thing where it's a common, something about the genetic makeup of Japanese men makes, uh, uh, having a nosebleed when you have an erection really common so it's a trope in anime and manga for that to happen wait this is a real thing what? it's something about the combination of like fairly high average blood pressure and fairly thin nose lining and some other shit there's just a few japanese genetic things that line up to make the nosebleeds on hard-ons pretty common I have to go do push-ups. That's one of the wildest yeah, apparently, things like, I've ever yeah, heard. Yeah, apparently, like, 60, 70% of guys imagine, in Japan is something I've heard of. Can you yeah. imagine the level of embarrassment to get an erection in school? You're trying to cover it up, but what are you doing? Bleeding down your face. That makes me really sad for children who are just trying to have normal puberty. So now we're going into Puma. I thought that it was absolutely incredible um, to be in this scene. And say, originally Hachi had volunteered to guide us on the voyage for the Fishman Island, but he was so badly wounded in Sabodi that he had to be forced to return to the Fishman Island already. He was wounded for the same reason as Duval. That is to say, in the process of defending the Thousand Sunny from attackers around a year ago now, the Sunny's whereabouts was discovered by the Marines and things became violent. The two of them were both taken out in that struggle. Well, what then? How is the ship safe up until now? Because it had one more defender. The very man who tore our crew apart two years ago, Bartholomew Kuma, Shishibukai. A few days ago, when I first arrived at the Sunny, I couldn't believe my eyes. I've been waiting for you. And he's just covered in blood, ripped clothing, wounds, sword stuck in his arm, and his Bible under one arm. And then he says, what do you think you're doing? Mission complete. And stands up and walks away. There wasn't a single scratch on the Sunny. And when I asked Rayleigh about it afterwards, he told me what Kuma had told him in the middle of the battle back then. I am one of the leading members of the Revolutionary Army. I have my reasons for wishing to help this crew escape this place. I think you may all have realized this to an extent, but that old man saved our lives back there. And after we had vanished from the island, Kuma-san visited Rayleigh with more to tell. I do not have much time left. I don't know why he had to submit this, but... The Marines have been modifying bit by bit as an experimental subject, changing his body more and more into a cyborg. He'd agreed to have his personality completely erased by the time of the ultimate war. The man responsible for this restructuring, Dr. Vegapunk, had allowed him to include a single mission of his own into the reprogramming to protect the ship of the Straw Hat Pirates until the day that the members returned. That is why, for the past two years, despite having none of his original memories, he's been following the orders of his former self, waiting until the day we came back. It's really sweet, huh? It's 
incredible. It's incredible. And him holding the Bible under his arm to me, two years later, sitting there covered in blood, having fought all these times and having had built into his new programming that he would protect the ship right until the end. And then having him still holding that Bible just made me say like, it definitely is his own personal hold where he is trying to maintain his humanity and remember that he is the original now that he is so many copies of him who are out destroying by Dr. Vegapunk. I have this pure, pure hope that Dr. Vegapunk is on the right side and is going through all of these things and then it'll turn out, I've told you before, that the machines all turn on the Marines and do the bidding and become a personal army of rebellion and that eventually they all turn around and start fighting on the behalf um, of the rebellion and for all the straw hats. It's a wild mm -hmm. hope, a wild hope, but I have this hope. But I just, I just keep thinking about like what are some of the reasons that Kuma could be allowed to allow himself to have all of his pieces erased and he, his humanity erased and then he just holds on to this one book as a last remnant of his humanity and I keep thinking of maybe that's it maybe there's more to this and eventually he's going to do more good I know you say that all of Vegapunk's inventions are bad and, and just a part of me hopes I mean, a part of me hopes that since young Vegapunk young Vegapunk spent so much of his time in creating inventions for humans to help them and so I just keep hoping that this is the long game. Inventions are necessarily bad. Like the pacifistas are being used for bad things, but are just like, they're a weapon, but like a way of crossing the comm belt safely. The Marines are using it, which is the bad part, but that's not a bad invention. That could be very helpful to people. Yeah, I always think about it because it's the same, like in our province, our premier is trying to make it so that children are not allowed to have cell phones in schools. And people are all like, we shouldn't have cell phones in schools and blah, blah, blah. And I always find these kind of conversations really interesting like first of all government are you going to give all the children within the schools ipads and computer laptops to work at because i can tell you we don't have enough computers for children especially children who are working in a modern era and so we often as teachers use their phones as mechanisms for research and other things so it's short-sighted but we like to blame the container or the item and it brings me back to tom's talk that he gave frankie you don't get to blame the thing and if you invent something you have to love it. It's not about what it is. It's about how you use it, whether it's a piece of paper or an iPad or a phone or a boat or whatever else it is. When you put something into the world, you have a responsibility to use it in a way that has good. And so the problem is, is that there are some people who don't take that responsibility very seriously. Hmm. And that is my thought on that. We're doing a bonus delete. So I got rid of these sections that I did. Well, I'm just going to redo okay, it. That's I can wild. redo it better. I'm very worried about Kuma. I don't know if I've said this enough. I'm hoping that his sacrifice was worth it. I'm hoping we're going to find out in the future that it wasn't just for a single person that he was trying to save, that he's trying to save something big like the rebellion or something. I really, I really hope so because I have a feeling that he has a ridiculously tragic past. And I've noticed that Oda really loves what? ridiculously tragic pasts. This is a thing I've noticed. Let me think I don't about know if it. you've noticed it. You, now that you now that I'm really looking back over, I'm starting to go, hey, wait a minute. And so another thought I had about this is I think that Oda really enjoyed creating the time skip for another reason, because it allows Luffy to catch up to the age that Ace was when he killed him. So by killing Ace at his age, and then we knew Ace's power structure when Ace died. We knew how powerful he was. We knew what he was capable up to that point. And it was strong. Don't, don't get me wrong. He had a really strong base. But then by having them have a time skip and allowing Luffy to catch up to around that age, and then having Luffy, yes, I know that he was three years older, it's but it doesn't matter. Close. It's a similar time. Allowing Luffy to have caught up a lot. Now we get to see where Luffy Luffy's strength and Luffy's ability is at a time that is similar to Ace's. And then it lets us also kind of determine whether Luffy is stronger and a better fit to be a pirate king. And I think already we're starting to see that he is and that it's kind of interesting now because when I remember seeing Ace and thinking, oh my God, he's so powerful. In comparison to what I've seen Luffy do already, it's insane. Luffy is already outpacing Ace. So yeah, I think it's amazing from the perspective of 37. Yeah, dude, when you're like, no, he's three years, not two. Um, yeah, I'm old. <laughs> Single year is nothing. But catching up two years and allowing that much time, because it isn't like Ace didn't have time to prepare way more than Luffy. 
He'd been in the world longer. He'd been fighting he'd longer. He'd been honing his skill. Of... He'd been honing it on the behalf of Whitebeard. Mm -hmm. And uh, Drock and I were talking. It wasn't himself anymore that he was building his skills up for and his pieces up for and his experience. Yeah, it, it was on the behalf this in the Blackbeard of Whitebeard. Video. So if anyone hasn't, or the Blackbeard stream, if anyone hasn't seen that stream yet, there's some context missing that I'm not going to go into all of. But I believe that it makes Luffy stronger that he is training for his crew and for himself. But the way he trains for his crew is just by wanting to push them forwards and help them succeed. Succeed. And I think it makes the crew stronger that Luffy encourages them to still have their own drive and ambition because this is a series where will, drive, and ambition are power. I genuinely think the fact that Whitebeard had to break Ace down to make him want to follow him made Ace weaker, make him have less potential. Because as much as he was being trained by the world's strongest man, whereas Luffy was being trained by a very strong guy, but not anyone who was ever called the world's strongest, he gained more from it was because Luffy still had all of his will intact. He had never been broken down to serve another. He was still fighting exactly for himself and his crew are still fighting as much as for each other, their own dreams, their own drive. They have gained will by carrying each other's will with them. They haven't lost it because they have never lost what they're fighting for. So they are carrying each other's strength and their own. Exactly. So it's interesting because you can see that in Ace's case, it's more as if he has become someone like Sanji and he is now fighting on the behalf of Whitebeard. So he needs Whitebeard to have massive conviction in his own goals and his own will in order for him to have conviction over his goals and will. And Whitebeard's true conviction, unfortunately for Ace, isn't really to be king of the pirates. It's to be a father. Out. And so Whitebeard, he did an amazing job, but the but the fact remains that when your goal is to be a father and a good father and create a system that your children can work inside of, then you're not going to be barking like the greatest strength out of your warrior or the same thirst for hunger, the thirst and hunger. Whereas Luffy is fighting on behalf of the goal to become king of the pirates for his family, which are the crew, because the crew is his central theme in his life. And I think that we have seen that already, even though Ace was three years older than Luffy and Luffy has caught up to him two years, Luffy has surpassed Ace's strength. And I think that's a really interesting point because I think that he allowed Luffy to catch up on Ace's age a lot so that we could see some interesting comparisons between the two, which mm. I did compare them. Oh yeah, that was the other question about the fact that nobody addressed Ace's death. Yeah, I mean- That was weird. I expected, here's what I expected when I first was reading it. I expected that right after we talked about Roger, and I still think that this is a misstep on Oda's behalf. I think that this should have happened. I thought that right after we had talked about Roger, that we would have seen that. And then right after that, we would have gone back to the crew and the crew would be standing with Luffy and say, Luffy, we're so sorry about Ace or something about Ace. And then Luffy would say some touching things. I'm not Oda. It's not my problem. That's Oda's problem. Something touching like, um, he'll always be my brother. As long as a man isn't forgotten, he's always alive or some bullshit. And then, and then I thought that they would have a moment about Ace and then I thought it would go back to the thing about Roger and then we should have found out about the hat and then it should have gone back to Luffy and he should have said something like, I promised Ace that I would take care of myself and together we are going to have the goal there and he'll be so proud of me wherever he is. There is about One Piece though like that, that Luffy has never bothered really listening <laughs> to people's backstories and I just think it doesn't matter to him and I think they know that, that what matters is where he's at and what he has at this point. No, but just saying, you know, I'm sorry your brother died. And I know the whole Luffy looking back thing, but that's not necessarily true. They still talk about Vivi and missing Vivi and yeah. we hope Vivi's good. And they still talk about other people they saw before. So I just think it was a really interesting thing. I'm hoping that we talk about Ace in the future with Luffy. I don't know if we will, but I thought that it was, it was interesting that okay. the crew didn't mention him. And I know the crew feeling guilty, et cetera. I don't know. I just think that there could have been room there for that. I would have liked to have seen it. It didn't have to be long, but just something small. I think it just didn't come up. I'm going to tell you that if somebody's brother died and I see them two years later and we fought to get back together, I'm going to say, hey, you know what? I'm so sorry your brother died. <laughs> I, I think that is a thing with interpersonal rela relationships in okay. general with Oda is that he's always very indirect and more about subtext than text with people's relationships though. Like that is just his writing style. Yeah. All right. Top five? Top five. Is you that where you rate arc? people? This on a one like to a month you've done it. You rate your your favorite characters in the arc on a scale from favorite to least favorite. I think 
think first we do a Luffy tier list of Luffy, which this time you had some hype of Luffy moments, but also not that much happens. So it's up to you what you want to do with that. Am I rating no, on a scale that's of fish never, to flower? Legitimately, never been how we've done this. Oh uh, yeah, the worst character mm -hmm. as well. The worst character is easy. Garibu? So I'm going to start with the worst character. Oh, oh. shit. Actually, no. My worst character is a word. What? It's Damalo Black's wood pants. That's the worst character combined. It. I almost mm. made it ugly, wet, wet face. Wet hair um, caribou, the swamp who's, swamp man. Whose secret of being a person is being stickier than you Kesha. You cannot get but, over your feeling mm, that Kesha mm. is sticky. Hey, there's nothing wrong with being sticky. Don't okay. be a jerk. Tomorrow, not Damalo. You're right. I keep saying Damalo. <laughs> Luffy is a... There are some hype-ass moments here. Luffy picking up his hat is uh, Luffy looking out of his cloak. Ah, makes me make the sounds of crazy. But overall, okay. just S tier. It's an you. S tier. It's an S tier because of all those incredible places. Luffy set the tone for this entire... I, I think Luffy arc. here try, is trying Luffy, to set the tone for the second half of One Piece. And that's what I was about to say. Luffy grabbing his hat, shaking it off, and saying, like, let's go, and then I'm going to be the Pirate King is a brand new era in time. And I think it sets the tone for our second part of the story. So I would say that, yeah, he's a full S tier. Is it an S plus? No, yeah, I'm not you, wasting you, an you S plus. You can only have a couple. But it is an S tier. Here. Top five brought to you by Mama it is, D. Luffy. It is brought to you by Mama D. Luffy. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Number yeah. three. Uh, <laughs> Immediate sound of resignation. Um, even I was heard that and was like, okay, <laughs> go off, Queen. Go off. <laughs> oh God. You know what? Number three is okay. Uh, no. Okay. Number one. Usopp. Number one is Usopp. Can you walk me through this here? Fine, I will. It's obviously Usopp, but anyone who thinks it's not Usopp is right. a crazy loon bird. Um, here's why. He left with an ability to be a phenomenal sniper. And he was a really good sniper, but he didn't have anything beyond that. No special talents beyond that. He was really good at building things, and that was fantastic. And he was getting better every day, and I suspect he still will as his tinker taker outer. But he didn't have anything else. My boy comes back with mage powers and suddenly can make a plant just grow well, out of fair, nowhere and magic eat a person. Island. Yeah, I know. But my boy comes back with... He does plant eating plant powers. Out. That's wild. That is All a right. wild yeah. glow up. He's an alchemist he, he druid. He's the tinker and alchemist druid, now, I am which, which was so unpredicted. Said to be a tinker alchemist, but now he's a tinker alchemist druid. Like who could even pet the boy? So now I, I can't believe that anyone would think that A, any of the glow ups were better than Usopp's. Usopp's is the number one. And yes, he's totally okay, ripped now. And then the other thing is that he seems really different. He's kind of like worked into himself and he has a different type of confidence in his person. And he just swiggity swags a little better. He's a He's got a little swiggity swag in his step and I could not be happier for him. He's an alchemist druid you know with All deep right. swingy oh, swag. Yeah. Okay, it's Usopp. Usopp wins uh, the coveted number one spot. Who else is in your top five? So then in the place of number... That was my brain going offline. God, it's so hard. I'm not going to rate my Rayleigh in here, even though even though my Rayleigh is a special mention for just like killing it on all levels and like way to have a way to have a memory flashback without losing it because it's hard to get old and start becoming nostalgic about it, everything. And so, you know what, Rayleigh? Shout out mm, to you. Okay. But you ain't on the list. But on the list in the number two spot is... Soul Brooke. King Brook. The unexpected thing about Brook is that I think Brook came from one of the least advantageous spots. I mean, after he had panty browsing with the devil worshippers, once he got kidnapped by the bad, bad people and they put him in a prison, he took himself from that to sold out yeah. concerts. Pretty Come impressive. On. <laughs> Come on! And so for me, I'm thinking like, sh yeah, that's a number two spot. He fought the crap out of his life to get into a position that allowed him to help the Straw Hats. And so that is, that's pretty amazing. He did amazing. You know what, Brooke? I see you. High five. Don't hurt my hand. You don't want to get five bone me. stabbed? Bones to riches. That's amazing. Number three. No. Number <laughs> four. Number yes. four. Erg. Erg. I've decided that number four is Rayleigh. What? 
I'm not going to rate my Rayleigh in here, even though even though my Rayleigh is a special mention for just like killing it on all levels, but he ain't on the list. But to be fair, I went back and started looking at him and he held the line for the crew and he was like, oh, not with my person, my Rayleigh. <laughs> and like, that is so good. Um, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just... I love her. I love her so much. I just, you know how they say you hurt the ones you love, right? Just... Number five is Nami. Well, someone gave a hilarious. one bit for each time Nami doesn't make it in the top five. Let's talk through the why. It's not that I'm doubting you. It's just, we, that's what we do. So Nami is the only one who's doing the work on navigating and finding out about the bubble things. And her freaking cool hand Luke moment in the bar was incredible. Um, her glow up is stunning. But mostly it's because while everybody else is like, da, 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 I don't know what's going to happen. She's like, Ugh, look, I am the one who's gotten all the information. I'm the actual grown up who has to like navigate us around and find out what's going on and has taken down everything for us so that we're going to be OK and has actually learned it. And everyone else is like, Wah. yeah, no, no one you else took I mean? it seriously. And she actually paid attention to what they had to do and explains to everyone how to survive. Like they are sailing underwater and she is the only one who considers that a logistical problem. And everyone's just like, let's sail underwater and nami is like um just a minute morons like can i do this and number three this is gonna be hard because there's a lot of people i want to put here this is the last time he's gonna be on my list for a yeah, while that's cool. i mean he's a dead body you know what this person says a duvel kuma combo they, they work together and i'm gonna give it to them because they both got the owies and can we put hatchy in there too because we don't see him now but that's bitchy not yeah, to see him helped. in the same level i would like to see it as a kuma with a star beside him because he's the true goat of goats. And then um, and then my boy Duval the, and the Sunny Hachi. Defense Squad. Yes. Because we ain't going nowhere without that trio of defense. I mean, we place. could go somewhere. We sunny would just defense be in a way worse boat because they would just Katu. steal the boat from somebody. Cat two suggested the mm. sunny defense force, okay, and okay, I like okay. that more. Okay. okay. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm happy for them. Most of all, I'm happy for us. We should say now? goodbye to people. Do we need to say goodbye hey, to people? If, you, if you just watch this on YouTube, we need to get uh, oh, we're oh. about to be on stream, live on air, if you can believe it, recording another Mom Piece episode of Fishman Island Part 1, leading up to the beginning of the Fisher Time tiger flashback if you like getting that kind of content if you like you know seeing us talk and getting it early show up on stream we have a great time the community is lovely this has been a shockingly good community and i know you're thinking yeah but the community around one piece is incredibly toxic and uh, terrible power scalers who have incredibly bad takes oh yeah no there's Wait, a lot of what? bad you don't, you don't interact with that part of it no this part's been good you just heard how surprised mama was about how good how the bad the rest of the community is that's evidence enough how shockingly good our community Community has actually been. Our people are squishy. Oh yeah, they're great. Our, our people, people are, are great. Sweet it's, it is a miracle and a testament to the vibe we give off that they are this good. I love my humans. Come in and hang out. Come in and hang out with us and be good. Yeah. But if, wait, wait, pause. If you suck, you know what? Stay good, the hell away. Good addendum. <laughs> I want to keep. I want to keep the squishy join unless safe. you suck. If you if you so suck, just check yourself. Be at the off door. with you. Check yourself at the door. But check yourself before you <laughs> I wreck yourself. <laughs> I'm a mama. I'll take you out. I don't out. know about the grammar in that one, but I love the sentiment. <laughs> you are my little squishy little sweet. YouTube, thank you for watching so much. We love doing this. It's been an absolute blast. I know the energy is weird. The sign-offs are weird when the rest of the stream is going to continue, especially when I'm not even starting a new artwork. I'm just going to keep doing this one. I am loving this freaking yeah, picture. There's a reason that we're taking some time this time, and, and I'm going to need to not do another picture. Can I'm in love with it. I'm glad you like it. I would marry it. Uh -huh. But I already married your dad, and if I told him I was breaking up with him so I could marry a picture, enough, I, think I think he'd be probably. upset. <laughs> we love you guys, and until next time, it's been lovely dropping to you.